Hi there and welcome to yet another video. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Matthias. I'm an underwater cinematographer and filmmaker based in Zurich, Switzerland. On this channel here, we talk about underwater cinematography. We talk about travel filmmaking and filmmaking in general. In one of my recent videos, I shared with you my preferred settings for filming underwater with the GH5. Now today I want to do something similar, but I want to share with you my preferred settings when it comes to filming underwater with the Paralens Dive Camera Plus. Coming up. Okay, so let's pick up our Paralens Dive Camera Plus and go through all the possible settings and I will explain to you which ones I prefer and why I prefer those settings. So first of all, we're gonna obviously turn on the camera so that we have our information on the little back screen. Then first we are going to go into the settings menu, the little wheel here. Um, and in that settings menu, we have different options that we can go through that I'd like to share with you. So first of all, going to white balance or the DCC. Now, if you enter this menu, you can either um, set your white balance, uh, you can set your DCC, which is your dynamic color correction, which is like the main feature, in my opinion, on the Paralens cameras. Um, and obviously you can go back there. So if we look at setting your white balance, you have either the option of setting your white balance to auto. I would really only use that if you're shooting with lights, with the Paralens camera and lights underwater. Then it is a good idea to use the auto white balance, but also mainly for macro shots. You also have the option to adjust your color temperature. So you've got the option of setting it to 3000 500, you have 5,000 and you have 5,600 uh, and 6,500. So you have a couple of different options that you can use there. I normally don't really use that option because uh, simply I very rarely shoot with lights when I'm shooting with the Paralens underwater um, cameras. Now going to the next one, we've got our DCC, our dynamic color correction. And here we've got two options that we can choose from. We can either set it to blue, which you will typically do if you're diving in uh, the ocean, if you're diving in blue water, obviously, or you can set it to green, which I use whenever I use the camera here in our lakes in Switzerland, or if you're diving somewhere in the ocean where the water has a greenish tint. By choosing the right one here, um, your colors will turn out much, much better. I've done a few experiments and I've uh, also done some trial and error. And if you choose the wrong setting here, your colors won't come out the way you like it. The thing is that with the Paralens camera, you don't have a screen that you can check how your um, white balance, how the, the, the picture looks as you're shooting. So what I would recommend is that if you're in a place that you haven't dived before and you haven't shot with the Paralens before, just do a little test first, uh, even just stick the camera in the water um, and take a short sequence um, in the setting green and the setting blue, take it out, put the card into your computer and just check and see which one looks better. So this way you can choose the proper setting, either green or blue, before you even go on your very first dive. Going back, and we're out of the white balance menu there, so we can go to our frame rates um, and to um, the quality of our video that we're taking. Um, so we have our resolution here that we can set. So in here we have the option of shooting in 4K, setting it to 2.7K, um, to 1080p or even to 720 if uh, you want to save some memory space and you don't really need the quality of Full HD or even 4K. Now personally what I like to do is keep it on 4K. Uh, simple reason for that is that with not having a screen on the Paralens camera the framing sometimes can be a little tricky 
and by using 4K as my capture mode, then I can in post, I can rearrange the framing a little bit um, and that gives me a little more flexibility in post-production. So that's why I would always recommend to go with 4K here. Going back and we can go to our frame rates and in here we only have the option of the 30 frames per second in 4K. If we drop down to 2.7K we would have the option of actually shooting in 60 frames per second. This can be useful if you know in advance that you're going to be shooting uh, fast moving action, larger animals like dolphins, like sharks, stuff like that where you might want to slow the footage down a little bit in post. That is best done when shot in 60 frames per second. But even with 30 frames per second, if you're um, working on a 24 frames per second timeline, you can still slow it down 20%. It's not going to be as big of an effect as it could have been with 60 frames per second but still you can use it to stabilize your footage just slightly by slowing it down 20%. But in 4K, we only get the 30 frames per second option, which is fine. And then we can also um, enable the stabilization, which I normally keep on. I think it works quite nicely, but you could actually turn that off if you wanted to. Um, I don't really see a reason why that should be done. So going to the next setting, the next menu, we have our custom setting here. And what that does, you do have a little custom function, which is, uh, which is this one here, which is your, your star. Once you choose that one, you're in, in a custom mode. So you can basically define what the camera should do in this mode. Now let's see what the options are in there. We can either have it set on the video, uh, we can have it set on slow motion, time lapse, uh, burst mode. Um, to be quite honest, I rarely ever use the custom function simply because most of the time I'm actually shooting video underwater. I have taken a few uh, photos with the camera as well, but most of the time I'm shooting video, so the custom function is not really that interesting for me. The next one is your option to include an overlay on your footage. Now that can be useful in certain situations. Uh, what it does, it basically overlays your depth, your actual depth at that moment and the water temperature in your image. Personally, I don't use it that often simply because if I want to include that footage into uh, a little video, a little clip, I prefer not to have the temperature and the actual depth in the image. So for that reason alone, I just keep the um, overlay off. And we can go back. And your next feature is the auto record. And what this does is that as soon as you descend and the sensor um, notices that we are underwater, that the pressure rises, it will automatically start filming. I think this happens from about a depth of around a meter or so. Um, this is quite cool if you have the camera set on your mask strap and you just don't want to fumble around with it, turn it on, turn it off yourself. So it will just uh, capture your entire dive can be useful. Again, I personally don't use this feature at all simply because I have the camera either in my hand or I have it on my big rig as a second camera when I'm uh, filming underwater and I always just turn it on whenever I want to, turn it off when I'm done filming. I don't particularly like having a uh, 45 or 60 minute clip of the entire dive that I then need to go through like literally second by second and see what sequences out of that clip are useful for the production or the, the video that I'm creating. So for that reason, I don't really use that feature. And then you've also got some advanced settings. And if we go into those advanced settings, you can obviously format your SD card in here. 
you have a feature where the camera will turn itself off after uh, 20 minutes. So if you keep the camera on but you're not recording uh, for 20 minutes, it will then just turn itself off. So to say to save some battery life, which is actually a useful thing. It happened to me a few times that after finishing the clip underwater, I forgot to turn the camera off and after 20 minutes it just shuts off itself so that it preserves um, battery power so if later on in the dive you want to take another clip you don't experience the situation of an empty battery and a camera not working when you need it to work. Then we've got the information for our firmware that is um, installed on the camera. Uh, we've got a reset function where we can set everything back to the factory settings. Obviously, you got your setting where you can uh, set your time, your unit, so you can either do your meters and um, degrees Celsius, or you can do Fahrenheit and feet. And you've got your zero depth. And this one is actually quite an important one because this one defines um, the pressure at zero depth. So I recommend to do this whenever you change location, whenever you at a new diving location, um, and just before you get into the water, just set that zero depth. So the camera know that you are by the water, but not in the water yet, and therefore it can then calculate the pressure and the depth according to that accurately on your dive. And if you're using the DCC, give you the best possible results with your um, automatic color correction there. And there you go, those are my favorite settings when it comes to shooting underwater with the Paralens Dive Camera Plus. I'm not saying that these are the only right settings to use this camera on, but I do have a little bit of experience filming with the Paralens Dive Camera Plus underwater and I found that these settings work best for the shooting situations that I need the camera in. So I hope I was able to give you some information on the preferred settings for the Paralens dive camera. Uh, if that's the case, please do hit that like button. It really does mean a lot to me, shows me that you do enjoy and like my videos and that I should be continuing making these videos in the future. Um, also, please consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't yet, so you're not missing out on any content related to underwater filmmaking or filmmaking in general that will be put up on this channel in the near future. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you next week.